All right, so it's May uh, 4th, I think, <clears throat> and uh, it's a Thursday after a work day. And uh, today I'm going to try to get the propeller shaft, uh, the new propeller shaft, reinstalled. <clears throat> So there's our new stainless steel uh, shaft. The plan is to uh, get the shaft inserted into the into the strut, up into the uh, stern tube. We have to be careful as we get it past the rudder here. It's going to be a really tight fit. You can see I took the paint off trying to, to get the old one out. And then uh, once we get it into the boat then we've got to do the stuffing box and the coupling um, so we'll see how those go I'll give you a little more update as we go along well I got it I got the I got the shaft in it's a bit tighter fit than I thought it would be Taking some paint off the other side of the rudder, trying it on this side, trying it on this side, but she's in, and then we'll go inside and look at everything first, and then we'll come back in and press the cutlass bearing in and do all the rest of it. But let's see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so uh, here's here's the shaft as it comes up through the stern tube. You can see the nice bilge coat paint down in there. So much brighter working in here with, uh, with a bright white bilge. All right, so next we'll, uh, we'll put the stuffing box over the stern tube, tighten it up. And um, I don't think that part will go very difficult. I think the harder thing will be the transmission output flange to the coupling flange bolts, but uh, we'll see how that goes. More in a little bit. Alright, so we got the stuffing box mounted on the stern tube. Seems very tight. I don't think we'll have any issues with that. <clears throat> I think before I put the uh, packing in the packing gland, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to press the strut bearing in so that kind of it positions the uh, shaft more where it's supposed to be so it lines up a little bit better with the uh, transmission. So uh, let's do that next. Alright, so here's my uh, here's my setup for pressing in the uh, cutlass bearing. So here's the bearing sitting right at the mouth of the, uh, the strut. I can't push it in by hand at all. Um, I have a plate here with a hole in it that's sized uh, to the OD of the cutlass bearing. So the cutlass bearing I use this to remove the cutlass bearing too, and so it had to pass through that hole when I'm pressing it out. On the inside here, probably hard to see, but I have a oversized fat washer in there. That's um, the ID is the the ID is the shaft ID, a little bit bigger, and um, it's just big enough so that the plate will push up against it flat and push the uh, push the strut bearing in and on this side we have a kind of a horseshoe shaped plate that slides over the shaft got a one inch cutout in it and um, that slips over the shaft and then rests up against the, the strut and then as I tighten the uh, tighten the bolts it'll Draw tight on the uh, on the all thread there, and it'll push the push the uh, cutlass bearing right into the strut. At least that's the theory. So let me get a couple wrenches, and we'll try it. All right, hopefully you'll be able to see this move a little bit. 
So I've got my, my uh, press thing all set up and I'm going to start cranking it in a little bit. If you look, I don't know if I can hold this steady enough, but if you watch that bearing, easing its way into place. A few cranks on that side, a few cranks on this side. is uh, pressing pretty evenly on the bearing as it pushes it in. If I don't, I didn't have that fat washer the last time I did this, and I forgot about the fact that the hole in that end plate was big enough for the, for the bearing to push right through. And uh, I did get it in that day, but I had to have this plate kind of off center and really it only pressed on maybe half of the bearing at a time which wasn't ideal and I don't think it was in there 100% straight or flat pressed in all the way flat so, uh, some good guys at a machine shop made me the uh, little fat washer and this is actually the first time I've used it so if you see that dimple on the cutlass bearing so that's where the uh, set screws were put the last time I when I had this in before I'm reusing this one but if you watch that you can actually see it getting closer and closer to the strut and that's our indication that we're pressing the pressing the thing in there Again, not too much pressure on the bolts just rotate from side to side one gets tight one gets loose switch to the other side there we're almost the dimple is just now at the edge of the strut a few more cranks and she'll have disappeared completely and she's gone all right, I'm gonna finish cranking this up. It's hard to hold the camera and uh, crank and watch at the same time. So let me put this down and finish cranking her in. And the strut bearing is all pushed in right where we want it. We'll tighten up the set screws once we're all done with everything else. But uh, now we move back into the cabin. I think we'll pack the stuffing box uh, not before we put it on the shaft, so we have to keep the shaft you know, loose And then um, once we have that packed and in place, then we'll tackle the coupling So we'll see that on the inside All right next item of business is to pack the stuffing uh, stuffing box nut I've Cleaned it out as good as I can got rid of all the old old flax um, I decided not to use graphite uh, impregnated flax this time around. We used it last year and it worked really well, um, but I did read some articles that, uh, that graphite might not be the best thing to put on a, on a stainless steel shaft. Um, so we're going with more conventional, uh, you know, regular flax. Um, for our boat, it takes 3 16 inch packing and we'll cut three lengths um, to the size of the shaft 
and then alternate the uh, seams when we push them into the stuffing box nut. So I'll do that next. All right, so you can see now I've got the uh, packing stuffed into the stuffing box. And the only reason I, really the reason I did it this way is it just seems easier to, to pack that um, if, if you're not trying to do it over the shaft with the shaft sticking through and all that. So now as long as I can get this to slide over the shaft cleanly, <clears throat> which I think I can, um, we get that snugged up a little bit. It should be good until we put her in the water and can do a final, uh, final adjustment. And so I've got it slipped over the shaft. And we just bring her down. Sorry about that. And right now I'm just going to do this kind of finger tight. Hand tight. <clears throat> Shaft still slides, <clears throat> which it needs to do. All right, I think that part's done. <clears throat> the last piece is probably going to be the trickiest, and that is lining up putting the coupling on and then lining the coupling up with the transmission output flange. And the reason I say that's difficult is because there's not a lot of room behind the output flange. The bolts have to go through from the stern end and a nut on the back, but the bolt can't protrude very far beyond the nut. Or it will it will not allow the, the output flange to, uh, to rotate. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if the bolts I have are the right length or not. I think they're too long. So let's get that coupling mounted next. Hopefully that won't be too difficult. And we'll see what happens, how it lines up and everything. <clears throat> All right, so I had, I had test fit this coupling on the shaft a few times at home. And there was really about one way that that thing would slide on without having to hit it with a hammer. Um, and I had to play around with it a little bit, but I did, I did find the right spot. So a couple of important things. You'll see the, <clears throat> you'll see the key in there, in the keyway sticking out that little brass tip. So that has to go in on the shaft, and then there's a. There's a cutout on the flange that it fits into, keeps the shaft and the coupling rotating together. The other important thing is when I when I had the shaft made, I had them um, fit the coupling on and dimple the shaft. I don't know if you can be able to see down in there, but to make sure that I have the the coupling seated all the way on the shaft. I'm looking in that hole and making sure that my drilled out dimple lines up exactly under that hole and, and I think it does. So there's two of these uh, two of these set screws that will go in. I'll snug them up good and tight and then um, and then we'll seize them with some stainless steel wire. Um, but that part went better than I thought, so I'll get these kind of tightened in so that the coupling and the shaft are very well locked together, and then we'll try to bolt it up to the transmission. Well, there's the finished product. So we've got a, a new coupling mounted to the transmission output flange, a new stainless steel shaft. We used the old stuffing box because it was in pretty good shape cleaned it up quite a bit, repacked it. We did replace the uh, stuffing box hose. The old one was pretty old. And so we replaced that. And then outside the boat we have the uh, uh, reused the cutlass bearing and then we polished up the prop and we'll, we'll reuse the old prop. 
um, a cleaned out uh, bilge with some fresh paint down here and I think we're about good to go. So there's the finished product on the outside. Stainless steel shaft, new uh, zinc. Uh, cutlass bearing is uh, secured with the set screws. The new prop is not new prop. The cleaned up prop is installed. And uh, prop nuts. Uh, got a new cotter key to put in there. So our last, really our pretty much our last project for this layup is to try and uh, buff out this hull. It's uh, light gray. I don't know how well it's been maintained. I know we haven't done much other than put some quickie wax on it. It's in pretty rough shape. And uh, we have a nice canvas, you know, cover for the winter, um, but it's held down by some, uh, some ropes. And everywhere the ropes were leaning up against the hull and rubbing on it, it's either got it really dirty or it knocked all the oxidation off and that's what color it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna take just a patch here around this area where it's got the black marks. And we're gonna see if we can uh, use some cutting compound on that tonight and uh, just see if it, what it does to it, I, I have no idea. I guess we'll find out. All right, so step one in the process is to uh, wash the hull, get all the wax, whatever else might be on there, dirt and stuff. So I would have liked to use uh, something with some oxalic acid in it, but um, I didn't feel like masking off the bottom paint and the, the oxalic acid if it, runs down the copper base, the VC-17, it'll, it'll uh, heat it up quite a bit. So I just used some uh, dishwashing soap, which will cut through the wax pretty good, I think. And um, now we're ready to try a little cutting cream on a, on a buffer, rotary buffer, and we'll see what happens. off a little bit of the bottom paint just so I didn't follow up the uh, follow up my pad with uh, bottom paint and we'll see where I got a little close and probably got a little stuff on there but uh, let's uh, buff that off a little bit and see what it looks like
I think we're going to need to let it dry, and then we'll see what it looks like when it's uh, when it's dry like the rest of the hull and whether or not it did a whole lot. It certainly took the, the dark spots off or darkened the rest of the hull, whichever. Uh, you can see uh, one of the lines where the ropes were, and then there was a really big one there that's uh, completely gone now. So let's just let that dry out and see what we do with it next. Should have started on the other side where the sun was shining, I think, but uh, I don't know if this will pick it up in the camera or not. But remember, I did right underneath the Tally Ho logo, and I don't know if, if you can pick it up or not, but I can certainly see a huge difference. It looks wet, but it's dry to the touch, and all of those uh, lines from the ropes are gone. And it's shiny and that was just with the rough cut um, uh, polishing compound or uh, cutting compound so we'll do it again uh, well we'll do that completely we'll see how that turns out if we like it we'll wax it put a coat of wax on it if it still needs something else we'll um, go to a lighter polishing compound but just from looking at it man that makes a hell of a difference and, uh, unfortunately it's getting late and cold and I don't feel like washing the boat tonight but I think it'll make a huge huge difference uh, I really hope this shows up on the video it looks darker gray there which it is it's a little hard to see a reflection in there because there's not much light but um, I think it's going to make a huge difference. So we'll uh, we'll pick a warmer day. We'll come out and we'll hit the whole thing, and uh, we'll mask off just the bottom paint so we don't uh, foul up our thing, and we can get very close to the water line that way. The side of the hull looks pretty bad. Both sides of the hull look very bad, except for the one spot that I polished. That looks. That looks pretty nice. And it definitely darkened it up quite a bit. So we'll, uh, we'll do more on a warmer day. The uh, other thing that I was careful about and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on is this is tape. This red line is tape, so we want to make sure we don't ruin the tape. And same with the logos. Uh, but I hit the logo here on the Y and it didn't do any damage to it. In fact, it looks a lot nicer so um, I think for the test it was very successful so now we pick a little bit warmer day the marina is still under construction <coughs> and uh, still hoping to op open around Memorial Day and I think we'll have the boat ready to go the last mechanical thing that we didn't get done tonight was to um, I think we need to adjust the engine mounts a little bit, the alignments off for the shaft, and um, I haven't tightened all the trans. I haven't tightened the transmission bolts because of that. So uh, on another day, maybe with some help, we'll uh, try to figure out what to do with to adjust the uh, engine mounts and alignment a little bit. Um, at least get it close, since we're not in the water. It's not going to. It's not going to stay quite like it is. Um, or we tighten up the bolts and and then re realign it once we get in the water. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do yet, but uh, I'll make myself a note not to start the engine until we tightened up those transmission bolts. So it was a pretty successful day. It's about 7:30, and uh, just tickled pink with with the uh, hull. I tried uh, putting that rag where you could see its reflection. I still don't know if you can see it very well, but I can certainly see it. And uh, I think that buffing is going to work out just, just great. So more later. All right, so this is a good demonstration, I think, of a uh, little polish job, a little test we did. So I've got my flash. And you can barely make out where the where the light is. 
I'm going to slide over a little bit where I did the polish job and you can see how much how much brighter the flash shows up where we where we uh, did the polish just a quick little test Polished, polished. Quite a difference. And if you're looking at the thing with your naked eye, the flash light disappears. Pretty amazing. So I think it's a worthwhile.